Um, subject to us having that capability, um, I would move that we sign the memorandum of understanding with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court that we do um, go on record in supporting uh, vis visual conferencing between the jail and the courthouse, uh, knowing that we would have to pick up the maintenance fee after the first year. Delegation approved up to $5,000 for that. Um, so my motion would be to accept the uh, request from the Chief Justice. I guess I'll second that. Any further discussion on that? No. All those who support the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, any abstentions? So voted. I don't recall any other issue that we had to bring up today. I thought you had to bring up a thing from the jail for arbitration or not? Let's let me check. I think a minute. Was it about dead caulking or something? Windows or I don't know what I it is. I if we can, it hasn't been signed officially, so we'll oh. wait till next week, and then we'll make it public. Okay, remember that. We we'll try yeah. to remember that. Make a note on that. Okay. Nothing else to be brought up today. Open it yeah, up for I I want to say something. Go ahead. Uh, I went to Concord last uh, Friday mm -hmm. because uh, I know there's once a month uh, meeting there. And when I was there, the lady told me she sent two commissioners an uh, email that a meeting was canceled, and uh, no one told me that. I thought you were on that, that list. Um, and uh, I didn't get the cancellation notice, so I mm -hmm. wonder why the two commissioners didn't call me or notify me. I'd I like to be notified, too, if a meeting is canceled. I thought you were on that on. list and should have gotten no, notified. No, I'm not. Okay, yeah, I was, uh, I was informed later on that uh, I uh, that I was a member of, of the uh, executive board and uh, that's why I got it. I assumed, as did uh, Commissioner Sorensen, that I got everyone it as an had officer. Been, would have, yeah, he got it as an officer. I assumed that everybody I did got too. the email. I didn't. Sorry that you and, uh, took that time to Yeah, she said she sent it on Tuesday. Yes. Okay. Well, there again, uh, we, I didn't know. Anybody got any public input? Mr. Albee. On the uh, <coughs> how's the county doing uh, question, I think in, uh, one of the resources that's e easily available to you is to look at the current census data mm -hmm. that's online. Um, our tax rate, which is a dollar a thousand, pretty much across the board throughout the county, be compared to median household income, can it be compared to home values? Um, that dollar a thousand and what is that, how does that impact each household can be compared to how the tax rate in all the other counties affect households in the other counties? That there was, a, and I'm sure it will come up again, um, some comment that we tax more than any other county or our taxes are above average and that the only way that that the only premise that that could be worked or when I talked to Representative Algren about his premise was that somehow our median income was lower so it jacked up the impact that that dollar a thousand had on our taxpayers but it, that doesn't actually hold and when you look at the numbers our tax rate is significantly lower than a lot of the other counties. So yeah. that's the biggest benchmark. The other um, um, study you could make is to get the budgets of the other counties and compare the amount of revenue versus the amount of expenses for each county. Because they're all run a little differently and we're run a little differently than, than the other counties. And comparing the, we all, provide the same services, some of them are bigger and some of them are a little smaller, but 
per capita, it, that's what you can compare. So you can take the 47,818 residents of Carroll County, divide your budget by that, and mm -hmm. figure out what your per capita revenue is, what your per capita expenses are. we going to be dividing are. it by the budget expenses or by the tax that they do, have to pay? You should do both because the budget expenses is going to assume that you've got 47,800 people paying the budget. Mm -hmm. You don't. You've got all of these people with second homes that are also paying part of the budget. So you need those two comparisons. You need the dollar per thousand comparison on the real estate. And you, I think, I know DRA, I've looked at the number online, for the total mm -hmm. value of real estate in Carroll County. Right. And then you can look at the total value of real estate in, in Grafton. Um, I, I never thought that there was much value to or, or information to the delegation talking about the efficiencies or inefficiencies of any given line because of the, the management of any budget requires all the lines to be brought into some mm -hmm. kind of balance. And sometimes one line here, for instance, the crazy conversations about overtime at the nursing home, if you take any line in isolation, you can make it look however you want. But if you put that line in the context of the overall budget and your options for operating within that budget, it changes your, your conversation mm -hmm. to something a little more realistic. But that's the job of the commissioners. I mean, you guys manage the place, the delegation. But I don't, I don't know that uh, if you looked at, and I have actually looked, I did it, a couple of years ago look at the impact per household versus the impact per household for Merrimack and Rockingham and uh, Stratford and we were significantly less per household in our, in our uh, impact of county taxes on the household and I don't think that's changed I think. that's all I guess the only other thing is I hope we don't go back to the old days of Marge Webster and all of those nice folks who decided on their own that county government had to be held in secret. It's a slippery slope. And I still disagree with our county attorney's position on the right to Okay. Any other public input? Well, we have elections, right? Oh. Yes. I know it's a topic that keeps coming up, but you mentioned on the uh, non-public that there are none that you feel that should be uh, brought into the public now. How many non-public minutes are there? You mentioned earlier that you would, in your opinion, none of the minutes that were now sequestered should should be right. ex right. exposed. How many are there? Yep. Probably not every meeting, but close to every meeting we have a public, not public. But if you just reviewed it, you should have an idea of how many. I didn't are. just review it. I didn't say that. Oh, okay, so it's just your I opinion. Said my opinion. It isn't that you went over it as a board or anything right. else. Right. So, okay. I, you know, I, I think I have a problem when you release something that affects an individual's name, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, it was an issue that was brought up. And I'm not sure how that affects that individual when that information is released. I think it's supposed to protect that individual, whether it's positive or negative. Right. Well, if, and I think if, it has to if, be on a case-by-case -case basis. If the commissioners are the ones that make the decision, which I think they should be, are the ones that make the decision on that, it would be nice sometime to hear you look at, you know, take out 91A and say the reason that we don't think we need to bring, the, we, we should keep these things non-public is and then relate it specifically to yeah. the, to the law I mean because what you say is nice as a human being this is that there's certain things you do and don't want to do for to people but there's certain things that you have to do legally and there's no there's no inherent protect there's absolutely no protection of elected officials none whatsoever of elected none. officials that's a, that's precisely what 91a we are well served to address yes. okay. I think we're aware of that. And then, and just in relation I'm talking about individuals that our decision affects. There's always the 
redacting. Yeah. I mean, the, what the, the, the point of 91A as well was how does your board operate with regard to its managerial decision making process mm -hmm. and its management of employees, its management of lawsuits, its management of contracts. So utilize redacting. I mean, I don't think anybody here or anybody who's subsequently going to watch it on YouTube is interested to know whether Jane Doe did something. What we're interested in is how did you manage that, that event right. and what was the outcome. outcome. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, it's, it's not to hang somebody out and tire and feather them, it, it's to figure out how the, the, the management's going and that's, that's all it is. Okay. The other, I'll just add a caveat to that, the other interesting thing is you, it seems to be employee issues. You've gone into non-public for every single time, and yeah. what, does some that, what does that say? Some contracts. Well, it's, it's true. So I, I mean, and I'll add another caveat. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that these guys have gone into any more non-public than we did when I was serving they on, have. on the commission. I've been keeping track. Have they? Yeah, I know. But that. She can I, tell I, you how I many times. I'm going to say that they should know the answer. Ninety percent of what we went into non-public for were employee issues. Were, yeah. You know, and, yeah. And it happens when you have a unionized employee oh, employee force. I know. You know, they need a certain process to be put in play. Okay. Any other further public input? Uh, Go ahead. One thing, when we were talking about the, uh, Mr. Albee brought up the aspect of the county looking at the, those, part, and I understand the delegation said so they're not going to bring that up again, but did anybody ask the delegation if they thought of other uses for the nursing yeah. home? They, it's just flat out, they just want to see the damn thing torn down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they don't want any expansion in mean, county government. A way of looking at it that Mr. Albee brought up today, I think it's pretty smart might be worth calling a couple of them up and saying, what do you think about us trying to do this? Well, I know there's a couple that voted against it. Yeah, just I can call those two and I know I can get it. Redact his name. It doesn't matter if you the state. Mr. Chip would back my name all the time. It just seemed like a pretty good idea, so. I, I, what can I say? I was always in support of keeping two wings. And I just want to say it's nice to be back. I'm sorry oh, I was gone some for so long, but... We missed you. Yeah. And I know that, that you answered uh, uh, Damon's question, but that's exactly why we have elections. Yep. And perhaps we should just sit on things for a year and have an election, because I, this is not reasonable. It's not reasonable at all. You know, I think the other thing is that many of our delegation members are not here. We're not here on a daily basis. We're here every week and maybe a couple times a week where they come in for one meeting uh, and make the decision. Um, and an example I'd give you is the snow plowing. Um, I guess I can't picture somebody out there plowing in a Kubota with no protection snow blowing, it's, it's snowing very hard, um, and it's not a case like a homeowner like myself, I could wait till it stops snowing and do it. It has to be done because we got shifts coming in, they need a place to park. If it builds up more than what the plow can handle, then you run into other problems. Um, I guess I just don't see, I, I thought it was a good deal to have another plow truck. What's going to happen now is there's going to be overtime involved because we only have one plow truck. The guy's not going to be working 80 hours um, <coughs> for one person. That's going to be a shared uh, responsibility. Uh, <coughs> and the other thing, if it breaks down, it's going to be costly. I've already told Will to line up a uh, outside plow company or individual or whatever that can be called on to come in if and when the plow breaks down. Um, all plows break down sooner or later. Fortunately, we've got a fairly new one. Hopefully it won't break down, but if it does, we don't have an alternative. We'll be out hiring uh, a company to come in and plow for us. Yes? Well, actually, I, when I thought that was probably 